Well, as the see more rocks reporting from down under, uh, this was the video again that I wasn't going to do. Uh, yesterday I watched True News and it really resonated and uh, after this morning's broadcast I really feel the need to share what they said because it looks as though they're under huge attack. Uh, what they are doing this morning has not appeared on YouTube uh, but only on their own uh, channel. So um, yeah I think we need to look to people that have moral integrity, uh, they can join the dots, uh, they're not seething with hatred and anger, but they're seeing things fairly uh, objectively and these are the people that are the greatest uh, threat to the powers that be to the deep state simply uh, because they are um, they are telling the truth as they see it and uh, I just want to uh, just tell a brief story when I was away I uh, had a reunion with my brother and he showed me a book that had been written, I can't remember the title of it, uh, but it was about the, uh, the Chinese influence in, uh, in New Zealand. And he'd bought it from one of the local bookshops. So I just took down the title and came back. And then when I came back, uh, I went to the bookshop. They didn't have it. They said that they didn't have any contact with the, uh, the publishers. Uh, and then my partner went online and then she started getting these error messages uh, from uh, from the publisher because that was the only way to order the book and uh, she can't get in touch with the publisher um, being blocked and this is just for uh, telling being involved in a in a truthful narrative um, about the influence of the Chinese in this country so that gives a sense of kind of what we're really up against and um, yeah I just hope that you'll listen to this next little segments that I've put together uh, with an open mind and even more uh, an open heart and um, to me it doesn't matter kind of what your language is if you've got a spiritual path I would say stick to that but get right with God get right with Gaia get right with whatever your truth something greater than yourself um, yeah if you're um, if you don't have that then uh, uh, it, 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 it's, we're getting the days are getting a bit late to start so <laughs> anyway uh, yeah, get your spiritual house in order. So, anyway, have a listen. MSNBC. Um, yes. Some video from MSNBC. They're, hey, I know they love us over there. Uh, we'll watch this. This is, uh, you know, back and forth between Trump and, and Obama. All right. Watch the similarities. You've seen the movie before. I'm telling you. It's the same movie. Watch this. Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Abu Bakar al-Baghdadi at my direction. The United States launched a dangerous and daring nighttime raid. A small team of Americans carried out their mission in grand style. Over the years, I've repeatedly made clear. We will continue to pursue the remaining ISIS terrorists. May God bless you. And may God bless America. Thank you. Hey, Trump is just a white Obama. And spread out the wealth. That's right. It sounds he actually like, said that. It sounds like a Middle Ages dictator. A lord this dictating a, to a feudal Genghis basically. Khan. This is Genghis Khan. We're going to go in and take some. Okay. 
He said this, now here's his three reasons. This is Trump's three reasons for seizing the oil from Syria. Number one, the oil fueled ISIS. Number two, it helps the Kurds because it's basically been taken away from the Kurds. And number three, it can help us because we should be able to take some also. We don't want to keep soldiers between Syria and Turkey for the next 200 years. They've been fighting for hundreds of years. We're out. But we are leaving soldiers to secure the oil. Now, we may have to fight for the oil. It's okay. Maybe somebody else wants the oil, in which case they have a hell of a fight. But there's massive amounts of oil, and we're securing it for a couple of reasons. Number one, it stops ISIS because ISIS got tremendous wealth from that oil. We have taken it. It's secured. Number two, and again, somebody else may claim it, but either we'll negotiate a deal with whoever's claiming it, if we think it's fair, or we will militarily stop them very quickly. We have tremendous power in that part. The oil is, uh, you know, so valuable for many reasons. It fueled ISIS, number one. Number two, it helps the Kurds because it's basically been taken away from the Kurds. They were able to live with that oil. And number three, it can help us because we should be able to take some also. And what I intend to do, perhaps, is make a deal with an Exxon Mobil or one of our great companies to go in there and do it properly. Right now it's not big. It's big oil underground, but it's not big oil up top. Much of the machinery has been shot and dead. It's been through wars, but uh, and and spread out the wealth. Forget impeachment. This is lunacy. This is actual lunacy. This is something Adolf Hitler would have said. We went to war because Hitler invaded Austria. We went to war because people invaded other countries. Trump is openly bragging. We're taking another country's oil because we want it. And we're going to send ExxonMobil in to run it for us, and we're taking some of it, meaning the U.S. We're going to spread the wealth around. But what about the Syrian people? What about the Syrian government? Oh, we had a message for them in this statement, Rick. It was that if you try to stop me, you try to use your military to liberate yes. your territory, I'll kill you. I'll send our military in there. You've got to watch this. So if the Syrian army says, that that's our oil fields, and we're coming in, to protect our oil fields. Donald Trump said the American military will kill the Syrian army if they try to protect their oil fields. Is that what he's saying? That's what he said. Exactly. And the left wing are both corrupt. They're both evil. Part of the same bird. It, it's it's a just, you know, I, I picture a, a phoenix, a phoenix bird, and it's in its talons, it has America, and it's flying to Babylon, and it has a right wing and a left wing. But America is being carried off the Babylon. And the people are singing. They're happy. The they're happy. They're, they're, praising the, they're praising the bird. They're praising the phoenix that's carrying them off the Babylon. They don't, they're, they're so deluded. They don't even know they're being taken to Babylon. The Babylon perishes in an hour. An hour. Yeah. It's coming, folks. It's coming. Get your life right with God. Okay? If you have the financial resources to get out of America, I would tell you to get out. I don't have the financial resources to get out. I don't. Okay? I don't have it. But if you have the financial America, I would tell you right now to get out. Sell your house. Sell it. Get out of here. Judgment's coming. It doesn't matter if he's reelected or replaced. It doesn't matter. Okay? It not, does not matter. And there's, there's no movement towards Almighty God. There's no movement towards holiness, repentance, righteousness. There's no political solution to spiritual rebellion. Yeah. yeah. Say that again. There's no political solution to spiritual rebellion. That's right. And we are in spiritual rebellion here in America. And the only solution to, to spiritual rebellion is repentance. Mm. And without repentance... There's judgment, right? That's it. Out of the universe, he was like the evil kings of Israel. He he 
encourage people to sin against God. How? He, without Obama, we wouldn't have same-sex marriage. He encouraged uh, lesbianism, homosexuality. Uh, I mean, the Obama administration was, was a wicked, evil administration. And they exported around the world. They, and, he, and he demanded that the yes, other countries... And which we the Trump get, administration is still doing. Yes, and we were going to get part two with Hillary Clinton. Yes, even worse. Right. And so people prayed, and Donald Trump was elected, and many of us said, it's a reprieve. We can, we can breathe a little bit easier, and, and judgment has been held off. But see, the Lord's fingers in that dream, all right, 2016 has now been moved back to 2012. And the Lord said during the dream, when you get to 2016, there will be very little time left. Okay. Donald Trump is no different than Barack Obama. No different. Okay. We got the same policies, same warmongers. Everything is the same. And it doesn't matter if he's reelected or replaced. It doesn't matter. Okay. It's not does not matter, and there's there's no movement towards Almighty God. There's no movement towards holiness, repentance, righteousness. There's no political solution to spiritual rebellion. Well, this next segment really resonated with me because um, really I can sort of see. Uh, that I'm doing something similar. Similar. Uh, the language is very different. I'm not a born again, uh, but it all comes down to uh, pure motivation. Right, because fire is going to fall on this country, and uh, we all could perish quickly, suddenly. I live with this every day. I know this is coming. The only reason I'm here, the only reason I put myself through this is because I know it's coming. Because of what God showed me in April of 1998. I've never stopped. I've never looked back. Never given up. I've always just kept going to tell people what I saw in that vision in April 1998. And I saw destruction. I saw cities on fire. I saw refugees. And that night... My daughter, Carissa, who was only 22 years old at that time, she had a dream that night. I didn't know. She didn't know I had this dream. I mean, this vision. And, and I didn't know she had that dream that night. But the next morning, she told me about the dream. And in the dream, she said, she said Jesus walked into her bedroom and spoke to her in her sleep. She never woke up. She just knew Jesus was standing next to her. And he said, daughter, beginning tonight, I'm going to speak to you about the end times through dreams and visions. And she had a dream. And she saw our family, Susan, me, Jeremy, and Carissa. Uh, they were unmarried at the time. And we were huddled together and surrounded by thousands of people. And she said they were all skeletons. And she said they were reaching out these long, bony arms and pointing their fingers at me and crying in a loud voice, if you knew this was coming, why didn't you tell us? All right. She had that dream the same night I had the vision of the cities on fire. This is the only reason I'm here. This is the reason I put up with the abuse and all the stuff that's thrown at me every day. It's the only reason. Because nobody in their right mind would put up with the abuse that I put up with. Why would I do this? Why would anybody in their right mind go through all this? I'm trying to raise the money, trying to pay the bills, trying to do all this. For what reason? Because I saw the vision and I know the dream. And I'm not going to stand in front of God someday and and say, I, I, it was too hard for me. I gave up. I quit. I, I didn't want to do it. Because those skeletons were crying out, if you knew this was going to happen, why didn't you tell us? I am telling you. I'm telling you it's coming. And you're not going to point a finger at me and say, you didn't warn me. I just warned you. It's coming. It